Jim, you made a comment early and it just kind of passed by. You said the new Great Depression. Are we in a new Great Depression? We are. Uh, and by the way, thank you for mentioning my last book, Aftermath. And if you have a copy of Aftermath handy, go to page pages 288 to 291. Now, this book came out in July 2019. In those pages, I say there'll be a pandemic in the next three years and there'll be social disorder and riots in the streets. Well, it's so, your fault. It's your fault. We knew it was. Well, <laughs> anyone who read that book can't say they weren't warned. So, again, to read the whole book by all means. But well, can, can, wait, Jim, Jim, can I say one more thing? In, in yeah. the book, The Road to Ruin, you warned also that there are military vehicles stationed all around America getting ready for the riots. Sure. And and uh, and they uh, we were even closer with the with the book aftermath. So everything we're seeing now was in that book. We have a new book coming out January twelfth. It's publication day. It's available for pre-sale on Amazon. But Kim, to your point, the title of the book is "The New Great Depression: Winners and Losers in a Post-Pandemic World." Uh, so if aftermath a year ago told you where we are today, this book will tell you where we're going to be a year from now or even further ahead. Can you give us a hint? Uh, well, we are, we are in a depression. A lot of people don't know what a depression is because they, um, first of all, no one's ever lived through it. If, if you have a living memory of a U.S. depression, you are 90 years old. And there, my mother's 90, so she remembers it. We still talk about it. But you're 90 or older if you remember the depression. So very, very few people in that category. Most people have never lived through a depression. They don't know what it is. They assume it must be a continuous declining GDP. It's not. Uh, two, two quarters of GDP of declining GDP is the technical definition of a recession. But a depression means depressed growth. You can have growth in a depression. It's just the growth is below potential. So if your potential is three to three and a half percent and your actual growth is one and three quarters percent, that gap between say three and a half and one and three quarters, that gap is depressed growth. Now, if your debt is going up five, six, seven, eight percent a year, which it is, and if your growth is one and a half, two percent a year, which it is, which it will be um, in, in my forecast, then your debt to GDP ratio, when your debt's going up faster than your income, you're going broke. It's as simple as that. So, um, but, but people aren't, uh, we're looking at intergenerational changes. And, and again, it all comes out of the COVID pandemic, but the pandemic, the social unrest and the depression that all converged in 2020, this is, we're not gonna be out of this in 30 weeks or 30 months. It's gonna take 30 years to get out of it. A lot of people don't know. The stock market reached a certain level in 1929. Do you know when it, re, and then it crashed 90%. Do you know when it regained the 1929 level, when it got back to the 1929 level? 1954. It took 25 years to get back to where it was in 1929. The last question is the debate between inflation and deflation. You know, and I don't know if you pay attention to Peter Schiff, but his definition of inflation and deflation are different than your definition of inflation and deflation. And so the question is, are we heading for wheelbarrow money, you know, where it takes a wheelbarrow of money to buy a loaf of bread? Or are we, uh, what else are we going into? So, uh, we're pro Yeah, we're probably, uh, I had a debate with Peter on this recently, he kind of reminded me of the, uh, I uh, forget the character, the Mad Hatter, maybe from Alice in Wonderland. I said, words mean exactly what I say, uh, no more, no less. Um, Peter, has a, Peter has a definition of inflation that may work for him, but it doesn't work for the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, the United States Treasury, or anybody who's trying to figure things out. So uh, I use uh, consumer price inflation. I mean, just to be a little technical, the Fed uses something called uh, personal consumption expenditure deflator year over year. That's a technical name, but it's basically just the, their personal uh, core, by the way, a core PC deflator year. It's just their personal uh, definition of inflation. That's the one I use. It doesn't matter if I agree with it or not. If I'm trying to figure out the Fed and the markets, I better use the same tools the Fed is using or else I'm going to miss it. So anyway, we're in for deflation, not inflation. Uh, we may get to inflation, we'll, we'll probably end up there. I agree it'll end up there. But we're gonna go, we're actually living through a deflationary episode right now. And everyone's like, oh, what, look at all the Fed money printing. They, they printed $3 trillion in the last six months, which they did, they did print $3 trillion in the last six months. So that's gonna cause inflation, no. That's what Milton Friedman said. Milton Friedman was wrong, the Austrian economists are wrong. Peter Schiff is wrong. Everybody, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'll tell you why. I'm not just going to throw this stuff out there and not explain it. 
Money supply has nothing to do with inflation. Inflation is caused by velocity, which is the turnover of money. So let's just say you took the money supply from $4 trillion to $7 trillion, which is what the Fed did. Nominal GDP is money supply times velocity. This is just the quantity theory of money. This is Milton Friedman's famous equation, which actually goes back to Eric Fisher in the 1920s. Well, they took the money supply to seven trillion. Okay, what's seven trillion times zero? It's zero. zero. In other words, if you don't have velocity, you don't have an economy. The thing that drives inflation is not the money supply, it's the turnover of money. That's the, that's the velocity. That's the zero in my case. Velocity has been dropping since 1998. It didn't start in 2008. It didn't start in 2020. It's been dropping like a stone since uh, 1998. And it's getting closer to zero. So, What's, wait, 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 Jim, what does velocity mean? For the velocity, velocity is the turnover of money. So let me give you a very simple example. So let's say I go out for dinner and I tip the waiter. And the waiter takes my tip and she takes the taxi cab home and tips the taxi driver. And the taxi driver takes the tip and fills up his car with gasoline, okay? In that example, my dollar had velocity of three. There was the, the waiter tip, the taxi driver tip, and the gasoline. So my dollar supported three dollars of goods and services. So that's velocity of three. What if I stay home and watch TV and don't spend any money? The velocity no is velocity. zero. Now, that's the point. It's not how much money you print, it's whether people are lending and spending, and they're not. And it's psychological, and the Fed cannot control the psychology. And you've got to change the psychology, get out of that deflationary problem, which, by the way, the only guy who did it successfully was Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1933. And how did he do it? He raised the well, price of gold. So when the Fed is printing money, you know, PPP and CARES Act and all this stuff, which is helicopter money for everybody, it doesn't cause inflation because people aren't spending. Correct. That's exactly right. And the decision to spend or not is psychological. How do you feel? You feel prosperous, you feel like it's all good, life's gonna get better, or go out and your drinks on me, or you stay home and watch TV. That's a, that's a, that's a binary psychological choice. <laughs> and, and I heard that's happened a lot with uh, companies and all that got the PPP money. They were nervous about what was gonna happen, so they're, they're sitting on it. They're not, Correct. They're well, not spending it. Well, you're, you're right, you're absolutely right, Kim. It's in the data. The uh, personal savings rate uh, in May was 33%. In June, it was uh, 24%. In July, it was still 17%. Before the pandemic, it was between five and 8%. So savings rates have tripled or quadrupled. Uh, and that that is what's actually happening. Those are Chinese levels of savings. So people are not spending the money. And they do, if they write a check, they're paying off debt. It was, they're not using it for consumption.